Hey guys, so in this video we're going to start talking about torques acting on discs, on disc-like objects such as pulleys or cylinders. And this is important because it's going to be a key part of problems, of more elaborate problems we're going to have to solve later on. So let's check it out. Alright, so let's say you have a, a disc or a pulley and you're pulling on it like this with a force of F, which then causes it to spin like this okay now what matters as it says here what matters is r which is the distance from the axis to the force from the axis which is usually in the middle to the force this distance here r that's what matters not the radius not the radius now in this particular example here little r is the same as the radius because the rope pulls on the disc and the edge of the disc but let's say if you had Let's call this F1, R1, um, so R1 is the radius, but let's say you were pulling with another force right here, F2. In this case, the force doesn't pull from the edge, so what, you, what matters is not the radius of the disc, but in fact, what matters is the distance. In this case, R2 is not the radius, okay? So what always gonna matter is the distance. Most of the time, the distance will be the, the radius of the disc, uh, but sometimes it won't be. Okay, let's do an example here. So two masses, M1 and M2. M1 is four, let's put it here. M2 is five, are connected by a light string which passes through the edge of a solid cylinder. So there's a string here that goes like this, wraps around the cylinder, boom. Um, the cylinder has mass M3 equals 10, and radius, remember radius is big R, little r is distance. The system is free to rotate about an axis, so the system can spin around an axis that is perpendicular to the cylinder. Um, perpendicular to the cylinder means that, again, it makes a 90 degree angle with the face of the cylinder, okay? To the cylinder and through its center. So basically, the cylinder spins around its central axis. We want to know what is the net torque produced on the cylinder when you release the blocks, okay? So torque net is the sum of all torques and we want to know the net torque on the cylinder, so we have to figure out how many torques act on the cylinder, add them all up. Remember, a force may produce a torque, so what we do is we look at all the forces on the cylinder, and then we figure out which ones produce a torque. So there are three forces, or four forces, that act on the cylinder. I have this one here is M1G pulling down, M2G pulling down, there is the mg of the cylinder itself, m3g, and there is a tension that holds the cylinder up. So there are four forces, which means there could be as many as four torques. Let's talk about this real quick. First, I want to show you how there is no torque um, due to m3g and due to tension. And that's because they act on the axis uh, of rotation, okay? So torque of T Right? The torque of any force is FR, FR sine of theta. In this case, F is T. So torque of T is T R sine of theta. But the tension is pulling, the tension is pulling from the middle here. It's holding the cylinder from the middle. So this R is zero. Now, this would have been zero even if the tension was somehow holding it up here. Okay? The other problem with this quite with this part is that tension pulls it up. Let me draw it over here. Tension, um, let's say tension was going this way, tension pulls it up. You have to draw the R vector from the middle to the point where the force happens, R vector. And these two arrows are both going in the same direction, which means that the angle between them is zero. Theta is zero degrees, which means that here you would plug in sine of zero, which is zero. So whether the tension pulls in the middle or if it pushes in the edge, it doesn't matter. They make the same, they have the same angle with each other here. Um, so this whole thing would be zero. The torque due to mg is for sure in the middle. Um, so it's mg zero. And it also makes an angle of zero. Um, because for this is the r for t, and there's an r for mg, and the mg is that way. So this angle is zero as well, okay? Sine of zero. So both of these guys don't actually produce any torque. So the only forces that will produce a torque 
are M1 and M2. So right away, you should know this for future problems. If you have a, um, a pulley with a disc in the middle, the weight of the pulley is not going to cause a torque on the pulley and neither is some sort of force that holds it up, whether it's a tension or it's held onto an axis or something, so there's like a normal force, right? These forces holding the disc up won't produce a torque on the disc. One way to think about this is that if the disc had been held in place um, by, by this axis, axis pulling up and MG pulling down, it wouldn't spin on its own, and that's because there's no forces causing a torque on it, okay? Uh, the only forces that cause a torque are forces that could cause it to potentially spin, and that's what you get with M1 that's trying to do this to the disc, uh, and M2 that's trying to do this, so torque one and torque two, okay? So if you imagine a disc, if you pull from the edge of the disc, it would roll um, from either side. Cool. So let's now calculate the torque due to these two forces. So I'm going to call this torque uh, 1, which is force, which is M1g, R sine of theta. All right. So what's the R vector for M1g? Well, it's acting, M1 is acting all the way at the edge of the disc because M1, the, the cable for M1 is passing through the outside, the edge of the disc. So the R vector is exactly the radius. So R1 is the radius. And by the way, that's the same thing that happens with M2G. R2 is also the radius because both of these guys are all the way at the edges. The angle between these guys, both of them is 90. So look how the R vector and the force makes an angle of 90, and the R vector over here and its respective force makes an angle of 90, okay? So both of these guys, we're gonna have that the distance is the entire radius, boom, boom, and the angle is 90 degrees. So this obviously becomes a one, and now I just have to multiply the numbers. The last thing you got to do is also figure out the direction. Is it positive or negative, the direction of the rotation? Um, M1G is trying to do this. This is, if you do a complete sort of spin with your hand, you see that this is counterclockwise. This is in the direction of the unit circle, so it's positive. This one is in the direction of the clock, so it's clockwise, so it's negative. All right? So torque 1 is going to be positive. M1 is 4, G we're going to round it to 10, and the radius of this thing is 3. So this is going to be 120 newton meter. And then for torque 2, negative, the mass is 5, gravity rounding to 10, and the radius is 3 meters. So this is going to be negative 150 newton meter. And when you add the whole thing, the sum of all torques will be 120 positive plus 150 negative. So the net torque is going to be negative 30 newton meter. And that's it. That's it for this one. So hopefully this made sense. Let me know if you have any questions. Let's keep going.